A new report from Mizuho shows that buy now, pay later delinquencies are accelerating. And June will be a critical month for firms like Affirm, uh, which has seen its stock drop 80 percent so far this year. Joining us is the analyst behind that report, Mizuho's Dan Dolev. Dan, welcome. It is good to see you. To me, Affirm reminds me of a horse that won the Triple Crown. This has not been a Triple Crown stock over the past few months. It is down a lot. Forgive me for being sarcastic. But you could have seen this one coming when the economy runs into stumbling blocks, possible recession, higher prices. You could see that delinquencies were going to go up, right? Yeah, and I, I you know, forgive you for being sarcastic as always. I, I Look, I, I think we're talking about two separate things here. We're talking about a cyclical trend and not really good trends that we're seeing right now with delinquencies, the 30-plus day delinquencies or the 30-day delinquencies moving up. By the way, the 60 and 90 are still very stable. And then the other part, which is our, what our call is predicated upon, it's the secular long-term disruption of credit by very sophisticated buy now, pay later companies like a firm. So I would want to separate the cyclical, which we may or may not get into more trouble. I guess this everyone has a view. And the long-term secular share gain from credit, which is why we are such big believers in a firm. So this is a buy for you, this stock. Yes, 100 percent. And explain once again, you, you had a price target. It's right now it's $19 or thereabouts. You've got a price target of 50. What takes it there? Look, I don't, again, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what the you know, economy, how bad, how bad, you know, the recession. Yes, no, soft, hard lending. I have no clue. What I do know is that buy now, pay later, and especially sophisticated firms like a firm, they are targeting at a new generation, the Gen Z generation, that actually does like to trade or does like to, you know, uh, buy things using this capability. They don't like credit. They This is a replacement for credit. This is actually taking share from the large banks, which are issuing credit cards. And that's the reason I think the stock would like more than double. Because once we get out of this, and I don't know how it's going to pan out, but once we get out of this, you know, they are the go-to market leader in buy now, pay later in the U.S., and they could literally be the Visa or the MasterCard of buy now, pay later. That's why I'm so confident on my call on this one. So what distinguishes, forgive me for being uh, ignorant on this, or, or at least sort of partly ignorant, um, which I usually am, but um, these companies, what distinguishes them from credit card companies is that they do not charge interest on the open balance, correct? You have a schedule. You pay X dollars in three months, X more dollars in more three months, X more dollars in three months after that. It's not interest they're making money off of. They're basically, they're separate. There are a lot of separate, you know, ways to do this. One is interest-free. One is interest-bearing. For example, with Amazon, it's a, you know, 0% uh, commission to, to Amazon, but they charge interest. I think what distinguishes them is sort of that pay-as-you-go Right. So it's mm -hmm. like a pay as you go, whereas you're you're getting stuff on a product by product basis. And the underwriting and the understanding of the pro of, of the consumer is the key competitive advantage because credit cards are archaic. They're using, you know, FICO, which was invented years ago. And there's a whole new generation, which I am not part of, uh, which likes to transact with with this. And I think what they're doing is they're catering to that generation and they're mm -hmm. capturing the mind share. And that's so much more powerful than any particular cycle. And I cannot stress it enough. They're a huge market leader in this. And if, you know, if really they can weather this, point. and I hope they do, yeah. um, it'll double. And if you're not part of that generation, by golly, I'm certainly not part of that generation. Let's move on to crypto, where the phrase of the day is crypto fatigue. What do you mean there? And how is that um, uh, uh, translating into stock prices uh, for companies like Coinbase and others? So I very sharp, you know, U turn from from my bullish view on a firm. I could not be more bearish on on Coinbase as I am today. And and you know what we feared for you know for for months or a year since we've initiated coverage on on Coinbase is that crypto transaction fees are going to zero, right? And and you know we didn't know that that the news about Binance is going to hit today, but this is actually materializing, and you're seeing you know crypto fees actually eventually going down. And this is like 90% of what Coinbase does. The note that we wrote today actually shows you that the down days have much more volumes compared to the up days. So on Bitcoin down days, the volumes are 3x more dramatic than on up days, mm -hmm. which has never been like that in history, which means that people are not buying the dip. And that's very important. That's the crypto fatigue that we're talking about. 
something has happened with the consumer. Dan? Yeah, the Fed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan, thank you so much. Very yeah. insightful, very enlightening. Thank you, uh, and we'll have you back soon. Dan Dolo, appreciate thank it. Thank you.